Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that, that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I'm continuing my teaching on the four things you need to do to stay full of God. And I believe this is the beginning of my third week on this. I've already covered a lot of material, and so, of course, you can go to our website and you can look at past episodes of this. They're all archived there free of charge. But we've also got product here. Here's a book entitled the, uh, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. And then we also have CDs and DVDs uh, that were uh, on this same subject, and you can get those. And I really encourage you to listen to it. There's no way I can go back and summarize everything that I've been teaching on this. But just real quickly, I was taking this teaching primarily from Romans chapter 1, verse 21, where it says that when people had a revelation of God, here's four things they did to deaden themselves, to walk away from it, and diminish the influence of God in their life. The first thing was they didn't put the proper value. They didn't glorify God is what that means. And I spent over a week talking about that, how that most people, they look at things and think that, well, this blessing or whatever, it's coincidental. They don't really value the fact that God is the one who gives us things. There's so many people that think that they are a self-made man or woman. And the truth is, that's not so. It's God that gave us all of our talents, all of our abilities, our health, that caused us to be born at this time, that caused us to have uh, unlimited opportunities. God is a source of all of this. And if you want to keep the things that God has done in your life fresh, then you've got to place value on it. You've got to value God and recognize the goodness of God in your life more than anything else. Not write it off to fate, coincidence, or stuff like that. If you don't do it, what you don't value, Satan will be able to steal from you. You know, just think of this. If you had a million dollars, you probably would not carry a million dollars with you. But let's say that you carried a million dollars with you, and if you were going to leave it in your car, you certainly wouldn't leave it in your car unlocked. Uh, of course, it's not wisdom to do stuff like that, but I'm just making a point, an illustration, that even if you did something like that, I guarantee you, you'd probably ask somebody to watch that car. You'd put something over that money. You would lock the car. You would do something to protect it. But if you had a penny that was on the floorboard, you might feel totally different about it, and you wouldn't uh, exert yourself and put the same amount of effort to protecting it. The value that you place on things really does determine the effort that you put into keeping that and holding on to it. And sadly, many people just don't put the proper value on God and the things that He's done in your life. So that's the first thing that happens. And then the second thing is that they aren't thankful. And these things go hand in hand because it says over in Psalms chapter 69, I believe it's verse 30, that I will magnify God with thanksgiving. And that word that was translated glorify in Romans 1, 21 was also translated magnify in Romans chapter 11. And uh, it says there that they're the, basically the same thing. To glorify God, to value Him means that you magnify Him. And one of the ways that you magnify God and what He's done in your life is through thanksgiving. Those two things go hand in hand. You cannot pro properly value the things of God if you don't thank Him for it. Thankfulness, if you just determine, I am going to be thankful every day, I'm going to thank God for the things He's done, it will force you to take your attention off of the negative, off of the problems that will be awaiting you during the day, and it will force you to think about what God has done to value God. And so valuing God, glorifying God, and thankfulness go hand in hand. I believe I could say it this way, that if you are not continually thankful for what God has done for you, then you are not magnifying and putting the proper value on what God has done in your life. And I know that thankfulness is not something that's in, uh, you know, a lot of supply today. There is a lack of thankfulness among people. 
matter of fact, over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it lists unthankfulness as one of the signs of the end time. And I believe that we can see that. You know, just in the last couple of years, uh, the, the discourse in public on on uh, all of the social media and in the news and all of these kind of things. It's just getting worse and worse. There's mean things being said that wouldn't have been said a few years back. And a lot of it is because people ha are just literally getting to where they are unthankful. They are looking for problems. And it just, it, it nearly amuses me, but it's not funny. It's really pathetic. Some of these people who have become multimillionaires, and every single person in the United States knows who they are, and they're complaining about how disadvantaged they are and how they're being ridiculed and persecuted. And I mean, they are, it's the antithesis of what their reality is, and yet they just look for something. If a person looks at them in the wrong way, they just focus on this. Thankfulness is the antidote to that. If you would go back and think about how good it is, I tell you what, it would make a tremendous difference in your life. So these are the two things that in two weeks I've been really focused on is just putting the proper value on what God has done in your life and being thankful. Those things go hand in hand. And this example I've used of like a seesaw that if one end is up, the other is down. If you are truly glorifying God and thanking Him, then everything else relative to that is relatively insignificant. But on the other hand, if you get to magnifying your problems, it automatically diminishes what God is doing in your life. And stuff. And you can't, you can't live this where they're equal and competing. No, it needs to be this way that you exalt God, you glorify Him, you are constantly thanking God for everything. You just find something to praise God about. And I know what I'm saying is opposite many people's. Um, experience. You don't even think that that's a positive thing. You think that it's somehow or another healthy for you to worry and obsess about all of the things that are going on. You know, we've got a uh, Healing Journeys testimony about Connie Weiskopf, and this lady was diagnosed with cancer. And all of her friends, when she got cancer, they said, man, get all of the stuff you can on cancer and go study it and get books and get on the Internet and learn all you can about cancer. And praise God, Connie had enough wisdom to say, no, I don't want to learn everything I can know about cancer. I want to know about healing. And instead of focusing on the problem that she had, she focused on the answer to her problem. And because of it, she got over cancer and she's prospered and doing well today. And I'm telling you, this is what many people do. They just go around and they constantly are magnifying all of the negative things. Thanksgiving makes you take your attention off of the negative and put it on the positive. You have to find something positive in order to be able to give thanks. And man, I could, I could go back and reteach a lot of this stuff. I'm going to move on today. But again, please go back and watch these programs because thankfulness is in short supply and we need to change this. You may not be able to change society, but you can sure change your focus. You know, today, I'm asking you, I'm challenging you. If you're watching this program, just start finding something to be thankful for. You can thank God for the weather. You can thank God for a beautiful day. You can thank God that, praise God, you're vertical, that you aren't flat of your back. <laughs> you know, the Scripture says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so you need to be praising the Lord. So again, going back to Romans 1, there were four things listed. The first one is you don't glorify God or put the proper value on Him. The second thing is that you aren't thankful. And then the third thing, it says they became vain in their imagination. And I want to just present to you that there is a sequence to these things. There's a cascading effect. If you don't put the proper value on God and value what He's done and recognize Him in your life on a daily basis, if you don't have eyes to see that and glorify God, and if you aren't thanking Him constantly and bringing your attention back to what He's done, then an inevitable byproduct of that is that your imagination becomes vain. It doesn't say that your imagination ceases to work. It just becomes vain. Instead of it working in a positive way, it works in a negative way against you. 
AND THIS IS SOMETHING THAT MOST PEOPLE DO NOT HAVE A GRASP ON. THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND THE POWER OF IMAGINATION. MATTER OF FACT, I'VE GOT A BOOK, AND THIS WEEK I'M GOING TO BE OFFERING THIS BOOK AS A SUPPLEMENT BECAUSE I'M NOT GOING TO GO INTO ALL OF THE DETAIL THAT'S IN HERE, BUT THIS IS ENTITLED THE POWER OF IMAGINATION. AND I TELL YOU, THIS HAS TRANSFORMED MY LIFE AND MINISTRY, AND I HAVE JUST COME ALIVE IN THIS AREA RECOGNIZING HOW IMPORTANT OUR IMAGINATION IS TO EVERYTHING THAT GOD WANTS TO DO IN OUR LIFE. IF YOU CAN'T SEE THINGS ON THE INSIDE, YOU'LL NEVER SEE IT ON THE OUTSIDE. NOW, THAT'S A BIG STATEMENT, AND MOST PEOPLE IN A PRACTICAL WAY DO NOT OBSERVE THAT. THEY DON'T BELIEVE THAT THAT'S TRUE. FOR INSTANCE, PEOPLE ARE PRAYING FOR HEALING, AND, OH, GOD, HEAL ME, HEAL ME, BUT THEY'VE NEVER SEEN THEMSELVES WELL. THEY SEE THEMSELVES SICK. THEY PLAN SICK. WHEN THEY GO ON A VACATION, THEY TAKE ALL OF THEIR MEDICATIONS AND PLAN ON HAVING THIS. They, THEIR IDENTITY IS SICK, AND YET THEY'RE PRAYING FOR HEALTH. IT DOESN'T WORK THAT WAY. YOU CAN'T GO ANYWHERE IN YOUR PHYSICAL BODY. YOU CAN'T EXPERIENCE ANYTHING IN YOUR PHYSICAL BODY THAT YOU HAVEN'T ALREADY EXPERIENCED IN YOUR IMAGINATION. THAT'S A HUGE STATEMENT, AND A LOT OF PEOPLE WOULDN'T AGREE WITH THAT. YOU KNOW, IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 26, VERSE 3, IT SAYS, THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE, WHOSE MIND IS STAYED UPON HIM, BECAUSE HE TRUSTETH IN HIM. AND THE HEBREW WORD FOR MIND THERE IS Y-E-T-S-E-R, YETZER. AND THAT WORD, ACCORDING TO THE STRONG'S CONCORDANCE, THAT WORD YETZER MEANS CONCEPTION. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT YOUR MIND THERE. THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE, WHOSE MIND IS STAYED UPON HIM, AND THAT'S WHERE YOU CONCEIVE THINGS. THE VERY... TERMINOLOGY THAT'S USED WHERE IT MEANS CONCEPTION. THIS GOES BACK TO LIKE A WOMAN HAVING A CHILD. A WOMAN DOESN'T JUST HAVE A CHILD, uh, YOU KNOW, RANDOMLY. IT DOESN'T COME BY THE STORK. I'M NOT GOING TO TEACH ON THAT ON TELEVISION, BUT YOU HAVE TO PLANT A SEED. YOU HAVE TO CONCEIVE A CHILD AND THEN CARRY IT AND GIVE BIRTH. IT'S THE SAME THING WITH EVERYTHING WE RECEIVE FROM GOD. AND THE, where, the PLACE YOU CONCEIVE IT IS IN YOUR MIND, AND I WANT TO POINT OUT THAT THAT SAME WORD, Y-E-T-S-E-R, THAT WAS TRANSLATED MIND IN ISAIAH 26, 3, WAS TRANSLATED IMAGINATION IN A NUMBER OF PLACES. GENESIS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 5, THE LORD CAME DOWN AND BEHELD MAN, AND THAT EVERY IMAGINATION OF THE THOUGHTS OF HIS HEART WAS ONLY EVIL CONTINUALLY. AND THE NEXT VERSE, IT SAYS, IT GRIEVED THE LORD AT HIS HEART, AND HE REPENTED THAT HE HAD MADE MAN ON THE EARTH BECAUSE OF THEIR IMAGINATION. THERE'S OTHER SCRIPTURES THAT SAYS THAT THE LORD UNDERSTANDS THE IMAGINATION OF OUR HEART. GOD DOESN'T ONLY LOOK AT OUR ACTIONS, BUT HE KNOWS YOUR THOUGHTS AND HE KNOWS WHAT YOU'RE THINKING. YOUR IMAGINATION IS WHERE YOU CONCEIVE THINGS. AND ACCORDING TO THOSE VERSES THAT I'M USING IN ROMANS 1, 21, IF YOU DON'T GLORIFY GOD, PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON HIM, IF YOU AREN'T THANKFUL, WHICH FORCES YOU TO LOOK AT WHAT GOD IS DOING INSTEAD OF THE NEGATIVE THINGS THAT THE DEVIL AND PEOPLE ARE DOING, IF YOU DON'T DO THOSE TWO THINGS, THEN THE THIRD THING IS YOUR IMAGINATION JUST BECOMES VAIN. I BELIEVE YOU COULD SAY IT BECOMES EVIL. YOU WILL START SEEING EVIL. YOU WILL START SEEING FAILURE INSTEAD OF SUCCESS. AND SO THERE IS THIS CASCADING EFFECT. THERE IS A PROGRESSION OF THINGS. YOU CAN'T HAVE A POSITIVE IMAGINATION TO WHERE YOU ARE SEEING IN YOUR HEART THE THINGS OF GOD COMING TO PASS IN YOUR LIFE. THAT WILL NOT HAPPEN IF YOU AREN'T GLORIFYING GOD AND IF YOU AREN'T BEING THANKFUL. YOU CAN'T by BYPASS THESE STEPS. YOU CAN'T JUST GO AND ALL OF A SUDDEN START SEEING YOURSELF HEALTHY IF YOU HAVEN'T, FIRST OF ALL, PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON GOD. AND LET'S JUST TAKE HEALING FOR AN EXAMPLE. THAT IF YOU ARE BELIEVING GOD FOR A HEALING OF CANCER OR WHATEVER, BUT IF YOU DON'T PROPERLY VALUE WHAT JESUS HAS DONE, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, AND I COULD GO THROUGH MANY, MANY SCRIPTURES, BUT ISAIAH CHAPTER 53, THAT BY HIS STRIPES WE WERE HEALED. THAT'S IN 1 PETER 2, 24, QUOTING ISAIAH 53. ISAIAH 53 SAYS WE ARE HEALED. ISAIAH uh, 1 PETER 2, 24 SAYS WE WERE HEALED. SEE, IF YOU GO TO TAKING THE WORD OF GOD AND PROPERLY VALUING WHAT JESUS HAS DONE AND PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON HIM, 
AND THEN GO BACK AND THANK HIM. FATHER, THANK YOU THAT YOU BORE MY SICKNESS AND CARRIED MY DISEASES. IF YOU DO ALL OF THAT, AND IF YOU ARE FOCUSED ON THAT, THEN YOUR IMAGINATION WILL JUST IMMEDIATELY START SEEING WHAT JESUS HAS PURCHASED FOR YOU COMING TO PASS IN YOUR LIFE. YOU WILL START SEEING YOURSELF HEALED. YOU WILL START IMAGINING RUNNING AND WALKING AND DOING THE THINGS THAT YOU COULDN'T DO. BUT IF YOU DON'T VALUE GOD INSTEAD, YOU KNOW, AGAIN, GOING BACK TO THIS SEESAW THING, IF YOU DON'T PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON GOD AND IN A RELATIVE SENSE DISESTEEM, DEVALUE EVERYTHING ELSE, LIKE IT SAYS IN ROMANS 3, 4, LET GOD BE TRUE AND EVERY MAN A LIAR, IF YOU DON'T PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON GOD AND DISESTEEM EVERYTHING ELSE, IF YOU GO TO ESTEEMING WHAT THE DOCTOR SAYS AND YOU REMEMBER THIS OTHER PERSON AND YOU VALUE THOSE, WELL, THEN YOU QUIT GLORIFYING GOD. YOU WON'T BE THANKFUL, PRAISING GOD FOR WHAT HE'S DONE. INSTEAD, YOU'LL BE LOOKING AT WHAT THE DOCTOR HAS SAID. YOU'LL BE FEARFUL. YOU'LL BE GOING BACK AND REMEMBERING ALL OF THE NEGATIVE THINGS, AND IT WILL CAUSE YOUR IMAGINATION TO JUST AUTOMATICALLY START SEEING THE WORST CASE SCENARIO. YOU'LL START IMAGINING, WHAT'S MY FUNERAL GOING TO BE LIKE? YOU'LL START PLANNING, WHAT ARE THE SONGS GOING TO BE? WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN TO MY KIDS? WILL ANYBODY MISS ME WHEN I'M GONE? WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN TO MY HOUSE? WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN TO MY DOG? YOU'LL GO TO THINKING THINGS LIKE THAT. If THAT'S IN YOUR IMAGINATION, AND YOU'LL GO TO MEDITATING AND IMAGINING THESE THINGS. AND WHEN YOU DO, YOU CONCEIVE DEATH. YOU CONCEIVE FAILURE IN YOUR IMAGINATION. AGAIN, I GO BACK TO ISAIAH 26, 3, THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE, WHOSE MIND IS STAYED UPON HIM. THAT WORD MIND IS TRANSLATED FROM YETZER, THE HEBREW WORD YETZER, AND IT MEANS CONCEPTION. AND SPECIFICALLY, THAT SAME WORD IS TRANSLATED IMAGINATION. SO IT'S IN YOUR IMAGINATION WHERE YOU CONCEIVE. AND IF YOU ALLOW YOURSELF TO SEE DEFEAT, FAILURE, THEN YOU CONCEIVE IT, AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, YOU WILL GIVE BIRTH TO IT. MOST PEOPLE ARE TRYING TO CHANGE THEIR OUTCOME. THEY'RE PRAYING FOR THEIR BEHAVIOR TO CHANGE. THEY'RE cha PRAYING FOR THEIR CIRCUMSTANCES TO CHANGE, BUT THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT YOUR LIFE IS GOING THE DIRECTION OF YOUR DOMINANT THOUGHT, THE THINGS THAT YOU MEDITATE ON AND KEEP YOUR ATTENTION FOCUSED ON. THAT'S A BIG STATEMENT, BUT PEOPLE ARE PRAYING, OH, GOD, CHANGE MY FINANCIAL SITUATION. AND THEY'RE PRAYING FOR FINANCES, AND THEY'RE GOING OUT AND BUYING LOTTERY TICKETS, WHICH, MAN, I'M NOT HERE. That's, THAT'S NOT MY FOCUS TODAY IS TO PREACH ON THAT, BUT IF YOU ARE DEPENDING ON THE LOTTERY, WINNING THE LOTTERY, YOU ARE JUST SPITTING IN THE WIND. IT'S NOT GOING TO WORK. THAT'S NOT THE WAY. YOU, you GO TO THINKING DESPERATE. Uh, YOU NEED TO START SEEING WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS, HOW THAT JESUS BECAME POOR SO THAT YOU THROUGH HIS POVERTY MIGHT BE MADE RICH. SECOND uh, CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 9, IF YOU SEE WHAT JESUS HAS DONE FOR YOU AND IF YOU PLACE VALUE ON THAT AND GO TO THANKING HIM FOR WHAT HE'S DONE, YOUR IMAGINATION WILL JUST AUTOMATICALLY START THINKING THAT I'M GOING TO COME OUT OF THIS. HOW AM I GOING TO COME OUT OF IT? AND YOU'LL START DREAMING UP WAYS AND YOU'LL START THINKING ABOUT THINGS AND YOU WILL CONCEIVE SUCCESS, FINANCIAL PROSPERITY IN YOUR HEART. AND THEN, PROVERBS 23, 7, AS YOU THINK IN YOUR HEART, THAT'S THE WAY THAT YOUR LIFE IS GOING TO BE. SO PEOPLE ARE PRAYING FOR THE OUTSIDE TO CHANGE, BUT THEY DON'T RECOGNIZE THAT THE OUTSIDE IS JUST THE BIRTH OF WHAT HAS GONE ON ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, AND SPECIFICALLY IN YOUR IMAGINATION. SO RELATE ALL OF THIS BACK TO ROMANS 1, 21. YOU HAVE TO GLORIFY GOD, PUT THE PROPER VALUE ON HIM AND RECOGNIZE WHAT HE'S DONE FOR YOU. THEN YOU HAVE TO BE THANKFUL, WHICH MAKES YOU FOCUS ON THOSE THINGS AND, and HAVE THAT FRONT AND CENTER IN YOUR ATTENTION. AND IF YOU DO THOSE TWO THINGS, THEN YOUR HEART JUST AUTOMATICALLY STARTS CONCEIVING SUCCESS, WINNING, NOT FAILING, AND YOUR IMAGINATION WILL START WORKING FOR YOU INSTEAD OF AGAINST YOU. BUT BECAUSE PEOPLE AREN'T PUTTING THE PROPER VALUE ON GOD, BECAUSE THEY AREN'T THANKFUL AND FOCUSED ON WHAT GOD HAS DONE, THEY ARE JUST LOOKING AT THE WAY THINGS ARE GOING IN THIS WORLD. THEY'RE DREADING THINGS. They're, they're, YOU KNOW, WHEN A DOWNTURN IN THE ECONOMY COMES, A LOT OF PEOPLE JUST GO TO SEEING THEMSELVES FAILING. YOU NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT GOD IS YOUR SOURCE. GOD HAS PROMISED THAT HE WILL TAKE CARE OF YOU. AND IT DIDN'T SAY 
that He would supply your need according to the U.S. economy or wherever it is that you're watching this program. God will supply all of your need according to His riches in glory. And if you were to take just scriptures on that and glorify God and say, God, you're awesome, and it doesn't matter what happens in the economy. It doesn't happen. It doesn't matter if they lay everybody off. It doesn't matter if this business closes. You are my source. And if you went to glorifying Him and putting the proper value and just thanking Him, thank you that you've provided for me up until this time. Thank you that you've met all my needs. Go back and remember the times that God has brought you through hard times and bring that into the present. And if you're thankful like that, it will just automatically cause hope to come. It will automatically cause you to start seeing a way out. But if you don't glorify God, if you aren't thankful, you will automatically begin to start seeing failure. And this is what so many people do. You know, I had a director of our ministry one time, and he had been a president of a bank, and he was used to having, you know, accounts that if they didn't pay, you'd turn them over to a collection agency. Well, in the ministry, I don't turn my partners over to a collection agency if they don't give. And we were behind, and he was just panicking and pushing the panic button. And, and he came to me for a couple of months in a row, you aren't taking this seriously. And finally, I had to go back and tell him that I remember when we were having a board meeting, and my board told me that based on the income, on the statements, we were bankrupt and they were going to shut us down. And I couldn't argue with it. We were in a financial crisis, but I just knew that that wasn't going to be what happened. So I said, let's pray. And as we prayed, my mother called and we had somebody send us a $60,000 check, which at the time that was two or three months income. It got us out of everything. And see what I did. I told him about past times and I glorified God and said, God's done it before. He'll do it again. And see, by me putting that value on God and remembering, being thankful and remembering the times that God had brought us through, it just gave me a peace in the midst of a crisis situation. And when I shared that with him, it changed his perspective. And he began to start expecting. And sure enough, God brought us through and all of that is behind us now. But I'm saying it'll work the same for any person. You've got to glorify God. Put the proper value on what Jesus has done for you and then be thankful, which means that you're not only aware of it, but you're focused on it. You're thanking God for the good things that He's done. And if you do that, your imagination will just automatically start looking for a way out. I'm going to share later in this week how that a positive imagination is what the Bible calls hope. You may not be able to jump from where we are right now to that, but I'm going to share that this week. And if you can understand that, man, hope makes not a shame. The love of God will be shed abroad in your heart, and I can guarantee you, you will see miraculous things. So this is really powerful, what we're talking about. I encourage you to get it. Remember, I've got this book entitled the Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. I've got a study guide. I've got CDs and DVDs. And then this week only, we're also offering this book on the power of imagination that will go into a lot more detail than what I've done on our program today. And I promise you that this is something that every one of us needs. God loves us. God wants to move in our life, but it's according to the power that works in us. You need to keep the engine running, amen, and receive. So listen to our announcer as he gives you some information about all of this product. I encourage you to please take advantage of it and call or write today. Then join me again tomorrow as we uh, continue this teaching on the keys to staying full of God. Learn the essentials to having a strong relationship with God when you get Andrew's teaching, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. Today, Andrew is offering his book as a gift to you absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Andrew's entire series, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God, is available in a book, study guide, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew is offering these products as part of the Discover the Keys package. This package includes the book, 
study guide and your choice of either a CD or DVD album. The Discover the Keys package has a catalog value of $80, but it can be yours today for only $60. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'm the one who wrote this book on the power of imagination. The subtitle is Unlocking Your Ability to Receive from God. And you know, when most people talk about imagination, they think of fantasy, something that concerns just children. But it is much more than that. This isn't talking about fantasy. This is just your ability to see something with your heart that you can't see with your physical eyes. It's what the Bible calls vision. It's what the Bible calls hope. And this is powerful. These truths contained in this book are one of the things that has just radically changed my life. Everything that God has been doing for me in the last 17 or 18 years is because of the power of imagination. And I share these truths with you. I promise you this would be a blessing to you. So check it out. Get this new book on the power of imagination. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I had been looking for the more in my life and someone had given me a teaching tape of Andrews and um, had shared another church with me who is also a Karis Bible College uh, affiliate up in Fort Collins. Um, so I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and seeing that Andrew had the more, was teaching the more that Jesus said we would be doing the greater, raising the dead, healing the sick, opening blind eyes. So I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and then I was diagnosed with cancer so I got every tape that I could, and it was just feeding my belief and starving my unbelief with the Word of God, with Andrew's teachings. I emailed Andrew. He prayed for me just a simple prayer, um, commanding the cancer to leave my body. I went in for the surgery. Um, I was probably about a week and a half, two weeks later. Uh, the doctors called me the very next day, which is unusual, and said, Connie, we don't know what happened. All the cancer was gone. Um, of course, my husband and I rejoiced, and I said, I know what happened. <laughs> cancer was the big sickness that came upon me, but not bigger than a cold for me anymore. On today's broadcast, Andrew mentions the healing journey of Connie Weisskopf. Connie's story, along with several other compelling healing journeys, are available on the Healing Journeys Volume 3 DVD. Contact us today to receive this valuable resource. If we understand how much God loves us, then healing becomes so easy to receive. You got the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We fight the fight of faith from a place of victory. Your life is about to change. Welcome to a new normal.